Hey guys, it's Aaron of VHA here bringing you a new video. Uh, so the great folks over at Zoos uh, sent me over a Z-Wave Outdoor Motion Sensor. Now this is the ZSE 29 version 2 model which includes uh, the Lux sensor as well. Pretty sweet. So we're going to open this bad boy up and check it out. So if you're interested, you can head straight over to the smartest house and pick it up for about 35 bucks. Now as far as Z-Wave products go, Zoos does some of the best Z-Wave stuff that you can get. And for the price, you really can't beat it. So if you're not looking for outdoor motion sensors, they got tons of other Z-Wave stuff that you might want to check out. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. Uh, so of course for starters, we're going to unbox the device. Once we do that, normally we would go ahead and install the device, but for this time, we're going to go ahead and configure it and get it set up first. Then the third step will be to install the device outside. Once we do that, then of course we'll get it added into Home Assistant. And lastly, I'll show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. All right, so here we are. We're going to unbox the device. All right, so it comes in a solid black box with all of uh, the information listed there kind of on the outside talking about uh, what type of sensors it has uh, included as well as um, what smart hubs it actually works well with. So let's open this thing up and see what we got. So this thing runs on three AA batteries, but if you have the ability to, you can use a little USB adapter that comes with it, which will allow you to power it over USB. You basically will get the sensor, your batteries, and adapter, some instructions on how to get it set up and set it into pairing mode, and then of course some screws and anchors to get this thing mounted to the wall. That's pretty much all you need anyway. So now we want to get it added into SmartThings. In order to do that and be able to take advantage of everything that it has to offer, we need to add a custom device handler. So as you can see in the directions here, this is how you set up the device handler to get all the advanced settings. I'll have this link in the description below so you can just copy and paste it. But we're basically going to hit the link, copy the code, and then we're going to paste it into the SmartThings IDE. So once we've got it selected here and copied, we're going to jump over to SmartThings IDE. We'll go into Device Handlers and say Create Device Handler from Code, and then of course paste it in there. Once you have it in there, you can go ahead and save it and publish it, and we are ready to go. Now you really don't want to put the batteries into the unit until you're ready to put it in pairing mode. Because as soon as you put the batteries in there, it immediately starts flashing and it's ready to be found by your Z-Wave or SmartThings Hub. If you wait too long, it will eventually time out. And if you've already screwed the back on, you're going to have to take the back back off in order to get it back into pairing mode again. So just something to keep in mind. So here we are in the SmartThings app. We're going to hit that plus to add a new device. Search for Zoos as the brand. And of course, then you can choose what type of device it is. For this one, it'll be a motion sensor. Once you do that, it'll start searching for it. And eventually it comes up wanting you to scan in a QR code. So you can choose to scan the QR code from the inside of the back of the sensor, or there should be a paper inside your box along with your instructions that has a copy of that QR code there as well. Scan that in and you're ready to complete the setup of this device. Just to show you, I thought we'd jump over here into the uh, settings menu of the sensor and kind of show you what all they have to offer in the advanced settings menu. So you can pretty much tweak anything. Everything will have a default setting, but you have the ability to pretty much go in there and change whatever you want. So as you can see here, you can enable and disable the motion sensor. You can set the sensitivity of the motion sensor. You have the ability to, to set the delay on when the uh, motion sensor clears. 
And then you also have basically the same things for the LUX sensor as well. And of course, if you scroll down to the very bottom, there is an option to put it in debug mode as well if you'd like, if you're needing to test something or having some kind of issue. Once you have the settings set the way you want them, then you're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so just to give you an idea of my plans for installing this sensor, I'm putting it outside uh, over there facing my uh, workshop. So as you can see here, there's the door for the side entrance of my workshop. Uh, so this will hopefully pick up any motion uh, that's detected around that area. Now I was a little worried about putting it all the way out here because as you can see in the video, how far away this is from my house, which means there's not a lot of Z-Wave traffic that's gonna make it all the way out here. But it actually is extremely responsive based on tests I've done so far, and so I'm pretty happy with it. So we're gonna give it a shot. It doesn't take a lot to get this thing installed, so basically unscrew in that back plate, and then once you do that, then you can mount the sensor to the back plate. And as you can see that it's already turning red, so it's definitely picking up motion already, and hopefully it is communicating regularly with SmartThings. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so we're ready to get it added into Home Assistant, which if you use SmartThings at all with Home Assistant, it is super easy with the latest versions. So now with the SmartThings integration, it's as simple as basically just restarting Home Assistant uh, to pick up the additional devices that are added into SmartThings. Now, you don't even have to do that if you're willing to wait for the device to show up. I don't know how often Home Assistant pulls SmartThings devices, uh, but if you're willing to wait, I think eventually it would show up on its own. We're going to go ahead and restart it here just to speed things along. Once it comes back up, we can go into our integrations under Smart Things, and we should see the new Zoos motion sensor. And as you can see, it shows up with a motion sensor a Lux sensor, battery percentage sensor, and of course a tamper sensor as well. Pretty cool. Now that we have it in place, let's jump over to the last step and kind of see it in action. So I'm not sure the best way to get this thing set up uh, to show you how it's gonna work in action, but I thought we'd give it a shot anyway. On the left side here I have Home Assistant pulled up with the motion sensor, and on the right side, I've got the app from SmartThings. Both of them are displaying the sensor, so we're gonna see how quickly it responds when I walk around outside. And as you can see, it's almost instantaneous, as if the device was right here next to me, no issues at all. That's it, guys. We've added a Z-Wave device, mounted it all the way outside away from my house, still picks up on my Z-Wave network and communicates regularly with Home Assistant. Way to go, Zoos. So for 35 bucks, if you need an outdoor sensor, this is the way to go. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So of course, for starters, we unboxed the device. Once we did that, then we went ahead and configured it uh, in SmartThings. After that was done, then we were ready to go ahead and install it outside. After that, we added it into Home Assistant, and lastly, I showed you what that looked like in action. Again, definitely head over to Zoos to check out all the products that they have to offer, and of course, if you're looking for Zoos products online, go to thesmartesthouse.com and check out everything they have there. As always, thanks to everybody that has donated to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, jump over to my Teespring merchandise page to check out all of the Burns Home Automation merchandise. As always, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. And if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.